So Apple have just released a brand new update to the game porting toolkit and this is a utility which allows us to run Windows games on the Apple Silicon Mac including DirectX 11 and 12 titles. And this update brings us up to version 1.03. And there are some pretty interesting changes, performance improvements and compatibility which I'm going to be talking about in this video today. So the first game we're going to look at is Prey which used to render the game world as completely black on game porting toolkit version 1 and also 1.02. But now that we've upgraded to Game Porting Toolkit version 1.03, the game world now renders correctly, albeit with a few shadow bugs, but it is far more playable than it used to run. Make sure to check out this game, it's a very underrated immersive sim and one of the few that you can actually get running on Apple Silicon hardware. So now we're going to look at performance improvements and here we're looking at the game Gotham Knights and on 1.00 we're only getting single digit frames. Whereas on 1.03 we're now getting around 30 FPS, the game still stutters quite a lot, I wouldn't exactly call this playable but it is a big improvement over what we had before. Similarly Spider-Man Remastered doesn't work so well on the base M2 MacBook Air running game Porting toolkit 1.00, but on 1.03 we're getting nearly double the frame rate. It's not really playable on the base M2, but if you have a Pro or Max or Ultra chip, then this is going to run a hell of a lot better. But how about other improvements, say from 1.02 to 1.03? So this is the game Elden Ring, a DirectX 12 title being run on the Mac Mini using the M2 chip with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 16 GPU cores. Here we're seeing a performance improvement of about 4 or 5 FPS, which basically represents roughly 10 to 15% performance improvement, which isn't too bad for a minor patch. Similarly, we're looking at the game Final Fantasy 15. Once again, we're running on the Mac Mini with the M2 chip, and here we're consistently getting better frame rates on 1.03 versus 1.02. However, not every single game is going to see a performance improvement. For example, Cyberpunk 2077 runs marginally better on 1.03, but not enough to be a significant difference. So 1.03 really represents a very minor performance and compatibility improvement over 1.02. It's a shame that Apple haven't released any form of patch notes so we actually see what has actually changed. For example, it's now completely mandatory to use macOS Sonoma. You can't run this on macOS Ventura any longer. So you have to remember that this is not a tool designed for end users to play the games on. It's really for developers only to test out and see how much work it would take to port their Windows game over to macOS. However, it still remains an extremely useful tool for Mac gamers. For example, the full release of the game Baldur's Gate 3 just happened a few days ago. However, what was conspicuously missing was the Mac release. So if you download this on Mac now, you're still using the early access version. You'll have to wait until September for that native ARM release to come to macOS. However, by using Game Porting Toolkit, we can actually play Baldur's Gate 3 right now. The performance isn't going to be nearly as good as the eventual macOS native ARM release. However, it does does mean that you'll be able to play the full release with the rest of the world. So big thanks to user Latrell who helped to film virtually all of the game footage in this video and without whom this video would not have been possible. If you want to see some up to date Mac gaming footage for Game Porting Toolkit and other games too make sure to check out their YouTube channel which I'll leave a link to at the top of the description. If you do test out version 1.03 of Game Porting Toolkit and find any other games that seem to work better then make sure to leave a comment. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.